the contract too. I mean, when he when Tupac got was in jail to get released, he signed a contract with Death Row on a, on a napkin, right? With Suge Knight and the other gentleman, I forget Dave his name, Ken, Dave Kenner. Kenner. Dave Ken- Kenner, who's the, who's the real head of Death Row Records. Yeah, so let's put it this way. I don't know if Tupac even knew. I, I want to ask you that. Did Tupac know that David Kenner was a part owner of Death Row, number one? And secondly, <clears throat> where in any court of law or anywhere in this country are you allowed to be the lawyer for an artist right. and the label owner? That is the, the number one conflict of interest you could ever have uh, against yourself. Like Tupac didn't have a lawyer. He had his lawyer was the owner. How, right, like that, like to sign a, a contract in a piece of paper on a, on a napkin, while you're in jail, so that yeah. you can get out of jail without a lawyer. With a lawyer, actually, the lawyer is the owner. Mm-hmm. How easy would it have been for Tupac to go into any court in this country and have that contract thrown out? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think he knew that. I mean, in terms of, well, the, I, I don't. I mean, the contract was highly specious. Um, you know, to get it thrown out was another story, just because of the fact that. Obviously, Death Row had huge power yeah. uh, because of the fact that um, Tupac and and uh, Interscope actually put up a huge amount of money. You know, his Tupac's bail was about um, I believe it was like three million dollars to get out of jail, and they put up about one point four million dollars before That's you know crazy. at the early on. So all up was um, about the same amount, maybe $1.5 million. And within days, several days after, we're talking, you know, 11 months in prison, after several days, released from jail, um, after Death Row put up that money. So obviously they had huge, you know, high-level connections. And so, and I argue, it was, those were U.S. intelligence type of high-level connections. And so, um, you know, Tupac, he suspected some of this. He wasn't sure. I don't know if he knew how, that that Dave Kenner was part owner of Death Row Records or not, but um, you know it was found later on that that uh, what Dave Kenner did is he started something called Godfather Records or Godfather's Entertainment as an umbrella company to Death Row when he had originally set up Death Row with uh, Harry 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 O Harris or his name was Michael Harry O Harris. Who was a, who's a major drug dealer? Right, he was a major drug dealer, and so in my book I show how. Not only was he a major drug dealer, Michael Harry O'Harris, but he was also one of the two understudies of Freeway Ricky Ross. And the people over top Freeway Ricky Ross were, um, you know, connected to the CIA. <laughs> they, and that was shown in um, Gary Webb's book, you know, the famous uh, San Jose Mercury News reporter who won a Pulitzer Prize and uncovered the, the you know, CIA crack cocaine scandal with, uh, you know, sh- with the Contras. Um, and so you wrote an excellent book called Dark Alliance based on his uh, newspaper. Yeah, yeah, if you look at it, yeah. I mean, look at what happened to Gary Webb. He was uh, right. critically acclaimed in the beginning. He was backed up by his newspaper. Mm-hmm. It, it, it got out, and then slowly his newspaper and everyone else started undercutting him, and, yeah. and, and he couldn't find work anymore, and they totally t- t- tore him apart. And I think yeah. it's obvious now today that he was right. He had the story. Mm-hmm. He was right on the mark. And yeah. uh, the guy killed himself, or or was murdered, depending One on. One other, right? I mean, he, he, whether they kill you um, by your own hand, by isolating you and making you know all those around you leave, mm-hmm. or they actually do it. What difference does it really make? You know what I mean? Right, right. It, it's just, it's it's yeah, shocking. The, the when CIA I, Inspector General, uh, you know, said in 1998 that the CIA was drug trafficking. That you know, basically Gary Webb was right. Yeah. Yeah, but his life was already ruined. His you know his career was ruined, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just this is this you see this over and I see it a lot when I look at this. It seems like this is a common. It's so common that how can you not think that there is more to than that meets the eye? It's too much for yeah. coincidence, you know. Like there is no big smoking gun, and I, and I mm-hmm. and I like a lot of what Tupac said in his late last you know CDs was last songs that. When he talked about uh, like the word Illuminati and all that, he said, mm-hmm. "I'm not. I'm not really focusing on that. I'm focusing on, on the brothers flipping. Like you know, basically he he was referencing what I'm talking about. The people around you flipping, not not uh, the big powers. Because I got to worry about what's in front of me. I got to do the activism here in my backyard. If, if if I can work with gangs and get gangs united, that's what I need to do. And and that's what I love about Pac is that he really had an activist mind." 
that oh, yeah. anyone can use in any movement. I get so much knowledge and inspiration from his music and words and strategy and the way to think in life and uh, and and kind of turning over the universal truths. I can't believe he was only, what, 24, 25? How old was he when he died? 25. When 20. He just turned 25 a few months before when he died, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. I, can yeah, you imagine it is amazing. That I mean, they, he's the hardest working guy, I think, I, I, you know, I've ever known you know in terms of not known personally of course but just just even known about you know his uh personal assistant molly Monjosi told me that he worked 24 7 every waking moment he was putting his work you know focusing on some kind of work in terms of writing lyrics in terms of you know, creating all he created and that's how he did it that's how he created you know what was uh, god it must have been like eight to ten albums before he died uh you know within an 11 month period uh, you know, after coming out of jail for only being out of jail only like ten or eleven months, you know, he created so many albums. That's why they keep coming out. And he he also you know acted in three movies in the same time in that ten or eleven month period. It's absolutely amazing. Nonstop, uh, nonstop work. Yeah. What um, like like look if you look back on um, like some of the things he said. Um, do you think that he would still? Do you think that he would be endorsing Obama? Like in politics today, I, I know it's hard mm -hmm. to speak for someone, but do you feel he would be someone who would be down with Obama right now, or would he be supporting someone like Jill Stein or even Ron Paul, who's a Republican? Well, I think he would have been really happy about a black president and that you know that glass ceiling being broken, and so that's great. But then you know, of course, once Obama started attacking other countries, I'm sure he would have been speaking out against that because you know just bombing so many other countries. It's uh, Tupac who says we've got money for war, but we can't feed the poor. So Tupac was very anti-war, and um, you know, and so for that matter, you know, after he saw all the, all the things we were doing overseas, he probably yeah would have supported someone like you know Cynthia McKinney for president, or or maybe you know Green Party's Jill Stein, or or Roseanne Barr for that matter with the Peace and Freedom Party. Or maybe he'd be running himself this year. Or, or maybe he would have been running yeah. himself because he did talk about starting a, a you know a new political party for. All the, um, you know, he called it lost tribe people. He called yeah, it. all all races, all creeds. I right. love that. That's like what he said, yeah. all you lost tribe motherfuckers. That's what right. I love. Like that's, man. Um, so what do you, uh, let me ask another question about race too, because sure. there's a lot coming out with the Black Panthers right now, the new Black Panthers, and and the, what I hear in the media is that that certain individuals within that group have said that they should kill all white people, kill Jews. Oh what do you think about that? I mean, you're a white guy. You're, yeah. you're working with the Black Panthers in some ways and, and getting this history well, and documenting it. Is there is there still coin help for going in there? Do you th think that people are twisted? Like, what what is the status with new Black Panthers and Black Panthers? Do you know enough about that to even comment? Well, I do know that uh, some former black you know some uh, former Black Panthers told me that the you know, Black Panther organization that started in the 1960s refused to endorse the new Black Panthers, and that's why they had to put new before their name, because it didn't match their, you know, their uh, agenda and their policies and their, their thoughts and feelings on things. So, so they, you know, they don't agree with a lot of what the new Black Panthers, um, you know, put forth. Now, I do think there are some great individuals in the new Black Panthers. I, I knew, um, uh, you know, a guy named, uh, uh, I forget his name now, so, uh, Shaka Shakur, his name is, he was, a, he was a great activist, great guy, a good rapper, and he's is he related York, to Tupac. He has, What's that? Is he related to Tupac? No, he's not. He just you know renamed himself after Tupac, but uh, he's got you know he's a, a great guy and he's got a lot going for him. But now he's he joined the New Black Panther Party, and um, you know so I think there's good individuals like him in the New Black Panthers, but um, the organization as a whole, I don't I don't know about. It. Obviously, the you know the Black Panthers. Uh, won't let them share their name, and um, you know, so I, I, there's there's bound to be infiltration. There's bound to be things, you know, you know, good and bad leaders amongst them. But the, the bad leaders obviously are saying some, you know, really wild things. So. Yeah. Well, um, have you, 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 on YouTube, like one of the biggest viral things on Tupac is that uh, some people think he's still alive. That he somehow mm -hmm. tricked everybody and is like Elvis. <laughs> you you want to comment on that? Well, it'd be great, but um, none of the evidence that I found 
said he's still alive. Um, so you know, I just if you, if someone showed some some serious evidence that he was still alive, that that'd be great to see. But I never I haven't seen it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I guess that my my focus was showing was looking at all the incidents of the Before, you know yeah. of the attempts on his life and. He almost had nine lives. It was incredible what you know what he struggled through. Because I, I argue, I show the evidence that U.S. intelligence tried to kill him at least five times before they actually succeeded. Well, t- let's talk about some of the other th- like things that they did, like the rape. Because I think that is like mm-hmm. the biggest. Like there's so many strange things that happened to Tupac, but yeah. that whole rape thing, it's just so obvious he didn't do anything wrong. And then yeah. he totally got railroaded. Tell people what happened, the evidence, like how they, they convicted him. It was just shocking when you look at it. Well, first thing that has to be realized is that this came after what I show is the fourth attempt on his life. So there was already huge targeting of him, you know, four attempts on his life before this sexual assault incident. And what happened with the sexual assault incident is he, he got led to a, a New York dance club by a a new music promoter, um, you know, not one new, but just a music promoter named Haitian Jacques Ignan. His real name was Jacques Ignan. He was Haitian, Haitian and Jack. he's the Haitian Jack that Tupac refers to in that song, Against All Odds, saying he knew he was working for the feds. Now, he didn't know it then, though. He knew it much later when they when they got his rap sheet. But um, So Haitian Jacques Ignan led him to this dance club, introduced him to this woman. This woman, Ayanna Jackson, her name is, left her date, uh, went out with Tupac on the dance floor. Um, witnesses said she proceeded, and she admitted this in court, in that public, she proceeded yeah. to unzip her, her his you know fly on the middle of the dance floor, take out his penis, and give him a blowjob. Now she said just she just kissed his penis in court. She said, "I just kissed his penis," and I have all the court documents of her testimony. Um, but you know, witnesses there said she gave him a blowjob on the dance floor. Okay. Now that's all fine. It's just it's strange. It's highly strange, but it's you know I'm not going to judge her for it. But then she goes home. You know she leaves her date there completely. Goes home with Tupac to his hotel and has sex with him. She then calls him uh, for the next few nights and says, you know I love love the way you fuck and I, I want to come back for more. And so um, Tupac was at an extremely fancy hotel that had an answering machine, um, you know voicemail, and so he had these messages from her on his voicemail she Haitian Jack um, helps arrange her to come back a few nights later when Haitian Jack's there with some other people and Tupac's there and Haitian Jack uh, gets some drinks for everyone and um, so Tupac ends up going back with her to his hotel room now in court they both had, they both admitted that there's oral sex between Tupac and this woman Ayanna Jackson Tupac said after they're all sex Haitian Jack came in with an associate of his and and um, another guy, uh, Tupac's road manager, Charles Man Man Fuller, just stood stood in the doorway and didn't come fully in. Um, but Haitian, Haitian Jack and his associate um, both start, you know, came over to, to where Ayanna Jackson was, Tupac was, and uh, Tupac just left the room, and that's that was it. And so now, of course, this woman says that Tupac helped. Uh, them, you know, uh, sodomize her. Um, now the jury found that that Tupac was found not, you know, was not guilty of sodomy, not guilty of attempted sodomy, not guilty of assisting sodomy. Um, you know, not guilty of all major charges. The only charge they found him guilty of was touching her butt against her will. They put in the words were by forcible compulsion. Okay, so he so wasn't found guilty buttocks. of assisting sodomy. Touching right? her ass touching. with his head. After <laughs> okay. she already gave him a blowjob. Um, and, and the thing is, Haitian Jack turned out to be, we, we, this is documented now too, he was definitely a federal informant, right? Right, yeah, agent. You know, they agent. call it informant, call it an but it's really an yeah, agent. They, basically what we're paid. saying is he was, yeah, he was paid. FBI. He's yeah. receiving money for the FBI for information to set people up. No, not just for information, but re- receiving money by the FBI as an agent to do all kinds of things. Okay. He, he was involved in, in major crimes up and down the East Coast, according to his rap sheet. Michael Warren got his rap sheet, and his major crimes up and down the East Coast, pages and pages long, they were, all the cases were dismissed. And Michael Warren's a longtime activist lawyer who said that's a sure sign of a government intelligence agent. And so... And then, you know, so this guy, uh, Jacques Ignan, ends up being, um, you know, 
accused of the same things of touching this woman's butt against her will. He pleaded guilty to that. He got mis two misdemeanors for that, which is like, you know, traffic no, tickets. No jail. Um, Tupac gets one and a half to four and a half years in a maximum security prison. Yeah, it's so. just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense. It just it's doesn't. Just, it really is unbelievable. And, uh, and now so Haitian Jack is hiding. I heard he went back to Haiti. Um, there's been some real stories covered, like mainstream press, on on his story and who he is, and uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's just like it it does see. I mean, how can anyone deny these facts? Like that, you can you can sit here all day and say we're crazy, we're making stuff up, but this is this is what happened, you know? Like, yeah. The editor of the New Yorker magazine came out with an excellent article um, in 1997, right after Tupac's death, and uh, she got. Um, she got a lot of acclaim for this article. But she basically said um, Haitian Jack's lawyer was a longtime policeman's uh, benevolence association lawyer. And she said, also said that Haitian Jack's uh, case was, was severed from Tupac's case, which is, you said, you know, was highly unusual. So she found a lot of foul play around that. Well, it's not unusual if you're a federal agent or, you know, if they're making a deal with you. Right? right, right. That's not yeah, like it's unusual if you you know if if they, if it's a straight up prosecution against both of them, but uh, mm -hmm. it's not if you're an agent. Yeah, and it's interesting. It was uh, right near that time was the uh, fourth attack on Tupac, where uh, two supposedly uh, off-duty police officers, white police officers, um, ran over to Tupac's car, smashed the window of his car, according to eyewitnesses with the butt of a gun and shot at him. And he merely rolled out of the car, grabbed the security guard's gun and shot back at them and then hit them a few times in the butt and leg and, you know, in the lower back. And, um, and Tupac got completely let off of that because witnesses said it, like I just you know, stated it, that these guys ran over Tupac's car and shot at him first. And I argue, of course, that that was another murder attempt. Um, because the gun they were using was stolen from a police evidence locker, and they call that a throwaway gun. And a police officer, I have the court transcript of a police officer saying in court, well, they, they use that, you know, if it's a uh, kill, if they kill someone that they weren't supposed to kill, and they just throw it away because it's from an evidence locker and it's unmarked. Um, yeah, they can get away with it and it can't be traced back to them.